Welcome back to the Good Enough Garage. On the last episode, you saw we got the Buick Skylark, started tearing the interior all out of it, getting ready to install the stereo. But we're gonna kind of switch gears here while we're waiting on stereo parts to get here. And we're gonna start on the disc brake conversion because all those parts showed up. Summit said they were on back order, but they showed up within like four or five days. So what do you say we get rolling? I'm White Wall Steve, and this is my Good Enough Garage. So we're out here in the driveway and I got a little table set up with some of the parts. I went ahead and I painted anything that was raw that could potentially rust, like the hats of the rotors, painted the calipers black, I also painted the dust shields black, the caliper brackets are black, and if we go over here, don't mind the lawnmower, but I painted the spindles black as well. So over here, we got all the other parts that come with this stuff. We got a proportioning valve, some lines, all the bracketry to make that all work, new bearings, and bright, uh, flexible brake hoses for the front end. The only thing we're gonna really have to do is we're probably gonna have to make a couple of brake lines, a couple of small brake lines. So let's get the hood popped. Oh yeah, also got the master cylinder bled and painted so that's all set so if you look at the old master cylinder and brake booster this system's a little old and outdated obviously it's why we're doing this but only one line coming off that master cylinder and it tees off to all four brakes that's very unsafe i cannot believe they did that for so long so if you ever got a leak in the system or blew a line there goes all your brakes so we're getting rid of this one longer master cylinder putting in that nice corvette style dual master cylinder and then we're also going to get rid of this brake booster and put a nice brake booster on here so we'll get that done first we're going to crack this line get this all unbolted and what's nice about this brake booster on this car is it's bolted to the firewall from the front so no having to crawl up under the dash to unbolt that like the low vet and the white wall special this is actually a little bit easier might have to get in there it might be a little tight but we'll be able to get that unbolted from the front right here oh yeah got my new wheels we'll talk about those later we'll get it jacked up get these front wheels ripped off and then we'll get the spin the old spindle and the drums and all that pulled off and then we'll get the new stuff all installed once that's all done then we can start worrying about what brake lines we have to make and what uh also the proportioning valve getting that mounted making sure that's right this kit is specifically for the buick skylark so it will work and it shouldn't be too much of an issue to make it all fit what do you say we get rocking and rolling let's start on getting that brake booster and master cylinder off and get the new one installed Okay guys, so I went ahead and I got the new brake booster. I had to get the rod all set up and everything. So the rod that was on here was a little short, so it would have made this a lot farther in, which would have made our pedal down. So it comes with a little extender piece. So I cut the extender piece down 
and I got it as close as I can to this one. It's maybe about maybe an eighth of an inch longer, but that's okay. That's just going to bring that pedal up just a hair and that'll be fine. So we're going to go ahead and get this installed. It also came with a new pin with a cotter pin. This will go through for the brake pedal. So yeah, let's get this one installed, get the pedal hooked up, and then we can get our master cylinder installed. All right, so we're just gonna slide this thing back in. Make sure we get it all on the studs. Got it on those studs, now let's go underneath, make sure it's sliding into that brake pedal properly. And it is, it's right on the brake pedal properly, so we're gonna go ahead uh, I'm going to pull it back out and I want to wire wheel these studs so that we can get the nuts on a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and wire wheel these studs real quick. Okay, now that we got those all wire wheeled, we can go ahead and put this on and hopefully the nuts will go on a little bit easier. Make sure it's on the bed pedal before I bolt it up. Should be. So I'm going to go ahead and get this thing bolted up. And then once we're done, we get the master cylinder on there. We got the new booster all mounted. Not going to hook it up to the brake pedal just yet, but it's set. So now we're going to take these nuts off. We're gonna get the new master cylinder installed. Okay, this does have fluid in it, so you wanna be careful. But we'll just slide that on there. Because I went ahead and I bench bled it before I painted it, because then, you know, if you don't wanna get brake fluid all over the nice painted surface, and I just dropped a nut. And of course, it didn't hit the ground. There it is. Got it. Okay. Master cylinder and brake booster are fully installed. Next up we have the proportioning valve and the bracket for the proportioning valve. So it, this hole right here will bolt to one of the mounts on the master cylinder. There is, however, a relay that's in the way on the fender, so we're gonna unbolt that for now, move it out of the way, we'll relocate it. There are little lines uh, that they came with the setup that go from the master cylinder to the proportioning valve, but we're not gonna hook those up yet until we're ready to start doing the lines because we want to limit as much leaks as possible so that we don't get brake fluid all over everything. So I'm going to get this relay off and then we'll get this mounted. Got the proportioning valve all mounted. So here's the little lines that it came with. We'll get these installed when we start doing the brake lines. So I'm going to keep these in the little baggie. I'm going to call it a night because it's getting kind of dark, but I'm going to come out back out here tomorrow and we're going to get the spindles all installed and get that done and then maybe the next day we can get the brake lines done and get this thing squared away so not too bad not too bad so far it's another day and we're going to try to get the brakes on this thing uh, so we're going to have to jack this thing up get the wheels off and then we're going to have to pull them spindles one thing i did notice is on the new spindles there's nowhere to really connect the tie rod so i'm assuming that we have to take whatever it is off of these spindles 
and put it on those. So hopefully that's not too involved, but we'll get it jacked up and we'll check it out. So what do you say we get started on this thing, get it jacked up, get the wheels off and see what we got to work with. I got the old wheel off here. Here's the piece that mounts to the tie rod. And yeah, it does bolt onto the back side. So we're gonna have to get that pulled off once we pull this off. I'm gonna pull this all off as a whole assembly. So we're not gonna have to take the drums off or do any of that. We're just gonna disconnect the ball joints here, the upper and lower ball joint, get this thing to snap down. I shouldn't even have to take the shock out, I don't think. I should just be able to pull all this off. We're also gonna have to disconnect this brake hose. And I don't think we're gonna have to disconnect the sway bar link either. Should all stay in place. So let's get that all done, get that all apart. and the old spindle off and everything and the old spindle had this on it this is for the tie rod end you got to take this off the old spindle so that you can connect the tie rod up because of course to save money they don't include this in the kit so we're going to put this on there it goes on to the bottom two holes here so it'll go just like that and we'll utilize the old nuts and everything and it should line everything back up the way it was stock. So we'll get this all put back together. Once I'm all put together with the rotor on and everything, I'll come back. So I got the brakes pretty much plumbed. All this stuff's installed under here. Got the rotors installed, got the caliper installed. Brake line is also installed with the hard line and the flex line, so that's all in. We ran into one little snag though. So I got these brake lines done. If you notice, the proportioning valve is missing. Sitting here, the proportioning valve goes like this. These two lines, this line here and this line here are your fronts. This goes to the right front, this goes to the left front. But this goes to the rear and that is much bigger. And of course, I'm running a 3 16 line down at the bottom to go to the rear brake. So what I wanna do is run 3 16 all the way to this. So I need an adapter to go here. Was not able to find anything at any auto parts store or any hardware store. So I ordered it online. And of course, it's gonna take a few days to get here, but it is the exact fitting I need with the correct flared end on here to fit into that. And then it goes into the flared end so I can connect this fitting on a flared, double flared line to go into there. And then that'll run down and I'll couple it in to the existing line towards the back. Cause I see no reason to run all brand new lines cause the brakes did work just fine. There was zero issue. I will say one thing, and this is a little bit of a disclaimer here. I'm gonna talk shit about boomers for a minute. I don't know why they do this, but I've seen this done before. And of course it's done on this car. They caked the entire frame with grease, axle grease. It's all over the frame. It's all over the engine cross member. It's all over everything. I don't know why they do it. And of course my dad said, well, it didn't rust, did it? Well, you are right, Davy G, it did not rust, but it's disgusting to work on. I was covered in grease trying to work on this damn thing. So this is gonna be going to somewhere who's got a frame uh, lift and we're gonna get up underneath it and we're gonna like 
completely hose this thing down and degrease it because it is absolutely disgusting underneath. Yeah, it's not rusty, but it's greasy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like somebody took a grease gun and just put it all over the frame. Fucking boomers, man. I swear to God. Anyway, that's me bitching about boomers for a minute. But anyway, looking good. So we got to hold off and wait for this. So once we get this fitting, we can complete this and get it all done. The brakes aren't completed done like I wanted to by the end of the episode. But since we got to wait for that fitting... I can go ahead and get all that done off camera because no one wants to see me fighting with brake lines for three hours. So that being said, we're going to end the episode here and I'll get that done off camera. And once we get the brakes all done, I'll get this thing back down on the ground and we'll see how low it is and if we got to modify the wheel wells at all or anything to make it clear. In the next episode, we're going to start on the stereo system. I got the radio in, I got the kick panel speakers in, and I still got to pick up an amp and something for the some speakers for the package tray so i'm going to get all that squared away uh aaron from bunch pinstriping also donated a subwoofer for to put in the trunk so we'll get that all done get all that put together and we'll do that on the next episode thanks for tuning in be sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time on the white wall steve good enough garage